Hello all, I'm back again. This is Halloween. Thank you for joining me. If you love what you see here, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I would love to know what you think. Today we're going to be doing a fun look. It's the Statue of Liberty. So we're just getting started. Please join me for more videos. I'll be uploading Mondays and Wednesdays around 3 p.m. Let's get started. So for the Statue of Liberty, I bought a mint green top with quarter length sleeves. We're gonna alter it a little bit. Um, it does have a collar and the Statue of Liberty does not. So we'll be cutting the collar off and gathering uh, the top. Now, I also bought a long, you can see how long it is. It's a long skirt, floor length skirt, about the same color. I got lucky and found it at the thrift store as well. I paid $7.45 for the top. I paid about $4 for the bottom. I purchased an Echo Mic from Amazon. So this was about four bucks on Amazon. I bought two yards of mint green material from Joann's. Any mint green material, the cheap material, it's not very expensive. The wig is Leg Avenue. Uh, I've worn this for two costumes previously and it's just really good quality and it was seven dollars at Goodwill brand new in the box. We also have a piece of foam board so it's not the uh, poster board it's a little thicker it's got a little foam in between the paper um, over here we have our spray paint which we'll be using quite a bit so I got tried to match the color I got like a mint green doesn't have to be this brand or anything just anything you can find in about that color a paper bowl I have a clear elastic lightweight clear elastic and then a ring any kind of ring this is uh, actually from a canning jar but if you have like a hard bracelet or something like that, any kind of a ring will work. Um, not like the ones we used to tie our shirts up with though in the 90s, you know, with the thing in the middle. It's just a regular ring with nothing in the middle is what you need. And then some kind of thread that's going to kind of match what you got going on. This is just a sky blue. It's not quite the mint, but it'll work. It'll blend well. And then over here, you know, of course we've got our fabric scissors. If you don't have some, I'd recommend buying some just for projects like these and just keep them. So for our makeup, for this look, very simple. We're just going to need the Ben Nye in Seafoam. It's Ben Nye Aqua in Seafoam, the small container. We'll use the gray which we should already have if we've created any of the other looks. And we are going to need white for highlight, so the cloud white. And that's all we'll pretty much need. Um, we'll probably use our white liner as well. And that should be all. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I hope you can see well enough. What I have here is just some flower and water. We're going to do an old school paper mache to get our flames going for our torch. You want to almost do like equal parts flour and water. So we've got our equal parts flour and water here in a bowl. I'm just going to mix it up. Hopefully it's about the right consistency. You want it to be kind of like the consistency of paste, really. Like not too thin, but not too thick. This is a little thin, so I'm gonna add a little more flour. That should be about the right consistency there. But I still do it this way for my costumes because it's easy, it's cheaper. Almost everyone has flour in their house. 
all, just at all times. So you don't really have to go out and do anything, buy anything. What I have here are three pieces of just regular newspaper. I've cut them into squares. And what I'm going to do is kind of do that. The square there, I'm going to kind of like unevenly line them up here. Like that. Almost like it makes a star shape. This is actually some packaging materials from something I ordered from Mercari. <laughs> And I just kept it because I knew I'd need it for Halloween. So keep that stuff. I didn't buy anything for this. I had all this stuff at home already. And then I have a medium sized styrofoam ball attached to just a traditional bamboo skewer. We're gonna see how this works out. What we wanna do is saturate Pull up the paper around the ball and saturate it with the mixture. I think it'll work great. So, just gonna saturate the whole thing. That's what we want. You can get up under here too. Just get up under the ball. You gotta get your hands a little dirty with this one. So, once you've kind of got it wrapped around the ball, you're gonna kind of form it a little bit around the ball. Something like that. And then you're gonna wanna put it somewhere to dry. I want a little more you really want to get it nice and wet because the wetter it is, the better it's going to form to the ball and be what you want it to be. So it almost becomes pliable. So it's so kind of starting to look like a little bit of a flame there. So yeah, what I'm going to do, we've had these beautiful sunny days lately, so I'm going to put this in the bowl, I just have I had a paper bowl, I'm going to put it in there to dry in the sun, and this will take overnight, so don't think you can do this in 10 minutes or something, it will take the whole night to actually dry, so you want to give yourself time to create this costume because you're gonna have some things that need to dry. This is one of them. So you wanna start, you know, a couple nights ahead of time to create this costume, at least. So if you can see what I've done here, I've cut along the neck just to make a boat neck with this shirt. And now what I'm gonna do is just cut it with my fabric scissors. So we're just gonna cut along the line that we drew. We're cutting that neck um, and collar right out of the shirt. So I went ahead and did that. You can see the colors over there and there's a big enough hole for my giant dome to fit through. So we can move on to the next step. So if you can see what I did here with the shirt, I just fold it over to make a cleaner line from what we had. We had a rough line because we had just cut the neck out. And I did a simple stitch. And what I did to gather was you're just going to stitch a simple stitch and then you're going to pull to make that gathered quality that you see here. And I went all the way around and did that. So it's as if you're using a little less string than what you would do if you were just hemming. So that's how we gathered the top and it looks great. So now you'll see I have my two yards of material laid out here on the floor. <laughs> I don't have a space to do this yet, but I will one day. So this is doubled. As you can see here. 
So what I'm going to do, because I want two sides, so I'm just going to cut where it's folded all the way down so that I have two long pieces. So now we have two pieces of cloth because we took our doubled piece and we cut along the edge and made two. The next thing you're going to need is your ring. Whatever you have, whether it's a bracelet or a canning lid, any kind of hard ring that you have, and we're going to uh, use that in this segment. So what we're going to do <coughs> here is with the ends of our fabric, we're going to take it and pull it through the ring. We're going to gather it. Pull it through the ring. Like this. And I did not um, hem the edges of this material. I think it's going to be fine without having to hem it. It's not a material that's going to really fray or fall apart. It may fray a little bit, but it'll look cool and authentic. I don't think it's going to look bad. Um, so I have it like that, as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is just sew, sew it so that it's around the, the canning lid. And we're going to do the same thing with the other piece of fabric on the other side. So when you finish sewing your fabric around the ring, it should look like this. And this is going to be our sash that we drape over across our bodies. As you can see, there's two sides of it. So that's what it should look like. So here's what we have so far. And what I'm going to do now is pin right on this side where I want the where I want it to be sewn so it can be draped across. So I'm gonna say right about here, I'm gonna get my pin and pin that and then pin all the way down. So you'll see the top where the gathered part is around the circle. And where I pinned it, I held it and pinned it right here. And I just did a diagonal straight down. And we're gonna cut off the excess material on this side. And then we're gonna flip it inside out and do it. Simple stitch, right down, straight down. As you can see, I have turned the material inside out. I've also removed all the pins and lined up the edges, just the bottom edges you know, the slanted edges, not the rest of it, just the slant that you just cut. And we're going to sew from the inside. So I've done about close to half so far. I wanted to tell you though, if you do want to hot glue, you can. You're still going to flip it over. You're going to do the hot glue from the inside so that when you flip it inside out, it, the hot glue won't show or anything. So if you're hot gluing, you're going to do what I'm doing with the stitching, but with hot glue. But you're still going to want to turn it inside out. You're going to glue right just inside here. Smash it. Then when you flip it inside out, it'll be seamless. So I told you we'd be ruining this wig today. I'm taking my spray paint here. And I'm going to spray paint this wig. And just to show you how well this works. It works great. You can spray paint anything. And there she is. The mane of Lady Liberty. Perfect. Next, we have our Echo Mic. 
just cut this thing off. We're going to take the sticker off. So as you can see, I took the sticker off. You don't have to. It was actually kind of a pain in the butt. And I took the little cord off from underneath. And if you choose to spray paint it with the sticker on, I'm sure the spray paint will work just fine and cover the sticker up. You'll also notice that I took the wig off of the foam head, turned it over, and painted the underside of the wig. I'll kind of toss it about and make sure I didn't miss any spots. So now I'm going to paint the microphone. Oh yeah. And if you haven't figured it out, this is going to be our torch. We're going to use a small paper bowl, not like the larger one that I showed you, up and around. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to wait for that to dry. Looks great. So we've got our microphone painted. Our wig's looking real good. And if you remember this little fella from last night, we did a little paper mache project. That's what this is. And this is going to be our fire. So we're going to spray paint this gold. So as you can see, we have our microphone here, our fire here. Looks awesome. Then we have our large paper bowl, and as mentioned in earlier in the video, we have the small paper bowl. So what I want you to do with the large and small bowl is take the large bowl and cut it like this. So you're gonna be cutting out about mm, two and a half inches of the bowl itself and then you're going to cut out the bottom of the bowl. And then for the smaller bowl, you want to cut out the bottom, make a hole in the bottom. I wouldn't cut it the whole way. As you can see on here, it rounds out. You wanna cut a hole just inside where it bends. So the wig looks great. I think it's about done here and then we have our fire which looks amazing next we're gonna paint just any old pair of flip flip flops or whatever to wear if you're going out so we're gonna just paint a pair of flip flops these were probably like a dollar at the dollar store they're just a cheap pair of flip flops so let's paint those if they look funny, it's because I cut them to size. <laughs> I actually bought these for my boy. Just got a couple more things to paint. So here is our small round bowl. We're going to spray paint it. We're going to do the same to the larger bowl. Spray paint all the way around, and when it's dry, flip it over and spray paint the other side. And that's what that's going to look like. Then for your fire, you're just going to hot glue right in the middle. So, we got our glue gun. Make sure there's a liberal amount of glue. Good amount. And then you're gonna stick your fire on there. Like, what do you think? Looks pretty good. There it is. Our torch is made. So for the tiara, it has those prongs that come out of it. For that, you just wanna take a straight edge. It can be a ruler. It could be a harder piece of paper. 
anything you have with a straight edge, and you're just going to draw a little pattern to cut out. Um, you're basically going to be cutting these out and adding them to her tiara. You want to make several because we don't know how many we're going to be using. So it's going to look like that. And you're just going to keep going along the edge making these. Some of them may not be perfect. Oops. So you just want to go along and keep doing that. And you want to go until you have about, you know, eight or nine of them. And that's how we do that. Once you see your pattern on the other side, you're going to take your box cutter and you're going to cut. And that'll cut through. And it'll be kind of cleaner too than if you're using a pair of scissors or whatever. Now we're going to just go out and spray paint these front and back. As you can see, I've finished the wig. I've completed the tiara, crown, headdress, whatever you want to call it. I will show you how I did that. So remember the prongs that we were making. And we had our large bowl that we spray painted. So for the windows, I used a large marks a lot and just drew them on there very easy and then when we had all the prongs had been dried i uh spray painted both sides once they were all dry i just hot glued them see where the bowl lip is so i just turned it over and i hot glued the ends to the lip. That's all I did. And then for the headband part, this is going to fasten it around your head. I took some of the clear elastic that I bought, just a little bit of it, but enough to go around the wig. So you're not going to want it tight to your head because it's going to have to go around the wig. So you're going to want it a little looser and I hot glued each side to the inside of the plate and I also stapled it. Uh, length of the stapler there is on the inside. That way the little hooks aren't pulling your hair out or your wig out, I guess. So um, if you're, you might be wearing your natural hair and painting it or, you know, I don't know. So this will just keep it from pulling anything so uh, you could take the headdress off if you're out and about it won't be a problem last but not least for the costume I had an awesome piece of foam that I kept I had bought canning jars and I this was about three times the, the width of this so I just cut it with a serrated knife you could use a piece of wood you can use a piece of styrofoam anything you want to kind of make a thick a thicker looking so we can make the book it is cut like that at the top now it's a little bit bigger than a um, yearbook and if you can see here what I did was I outlined the piece of foam and I have two outlines and what I'm going to do is glue this to the top of the foam so that we can spray paint it. If you try to spray paint styrofoam, I don't know if this kind will, but I know that the traditional kind of styrofoam will melt. So it's a cool effect if you want to look like bricks or if you have, you're making bricks for something, but for this, you don't want it to melt. So we're gonna cover it with the poster board. And I just outlined it with a pencil. I'm gonna cut it out now and we'll hot glue it and then we're going to spray paint it. So I finished my tablet. July 4th, 1776 is what her tablet says. And it's all done. Obviously I gotta take this off. So I would say about this costume that it's not a hard costume, it's moderate, I would say. It's not 
difficult to do. You just have to know what to do and it's easy. It takes some time. I would give yourself, you know, a day to do it. And, um, you know, you're gonna need overnight for the paper mache and things like that. But it's definitely not hard. You just have that. You gotta have the idea in your head. So, we're just gonna start body painting with our Ben Nye Aqua in Seafoam. You'll notice I got some paint on my hands. I don't care. I actually purposefully painted my toes <laughs> because I have um, I have red toenails right now and that wasn't gonna go very well if my toes were like poking out of the dress. So I purposefully spray painted them. They'll, uh, you know, it'll take some time to wear off, but it will eventually, no problem. So we're just gonna body paint. And then we're gonna do some highlighting and low lighting with gray and white. So, start there. Looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see very well. That didn't help much at all. It's very dark in my house. It's pretty dark. We have a lot of natural lighting, but we have all the windows closed, so. Not a lot of that getting in, and it's overcast today, and I had to do a lot of spray painting, so it's like, thanks. Couldn't be uh, overcast and rainy when I wasn't spray painting. So I'm just gonna do my face, I'm gonna go on and do my chest, my arms, and a little bit of my feet, and that's it. We're gonna do this. Not a lot of makeup for this one. It's just basically body paint. Um, no eyelashes or anything like that unless you want to be a sexy Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty is kind of androgynous. She actually kind of looks like Owen Wilson. No offense to Lady Liberty, but just saying, like, they weren't rocking a lot of makeup back then. She was androgynous before any of this stuff started. She was the original androgynous chick. Probably do white eyebrows too with my white pencil. Coming along fine. So I'm gonna go off camera, do the rest of my chest, my forearms, um, my toes, and then I'll come back on and do the finishing touches. So what I was kind of noticing with the sea foam green is that it's too dark. It's way darker than the costume. So um, I'm just going over it with some white. So I put the sea foam green on first and then I'm gonna go over it with white and it should be okay. It should be all white. <laughs> well, not all white, but I'm just gonna put that on kind of translucent and then put the white over it. You can see I've, I've done my face already. I was like, wait a minute, this is really kind of dark. It's not true to what it looks like on the, in the little circle. I mean, it looks kind of dark now that I'm looking at it, but it looked a lot lighter before it got wet. It's wet now, so it's darker. It's kind of like when you buy paint. You know, you have to know that it's going to dry a shade darker or something. Or at least that's how it used to be. I don't think it's like that anymore. They've mastered paint technology because I've painted all my walls and it was like the exact same color as the swatch. So that worked out. So I just put white over it and that lightened it up quite a bit. Still a little darker than my outfit, but I think it'll photograph well. So yeah, I look a little better now. I wanted to go off camera and just do my body paint. That's easy. There's really no shading. It's all one color on that. So I'm just going to do my waterline with a white eyeliner. 
I don't know what's going on. Just do my eyebrows kind of in white. Not even neat or anything. Just do them in white. These do not sharpen very well. There's that. I had my gray. I was just going to do a few little low lights on the face. I don't think I can make myself look like Owen Wilson, but we'll try. I did each side of my nose there. Give her a little bit of a cleft chin. We're going to do our top lip. In gray. All right. It looks pretty good. I did my little thing here. Right in there. It doesn't require a lot. So I'm going to go take pictures and Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's look. I just wanted to say in closing that this costume can be purchased. You know, you can buy a Lady Liberty costume, but it's just not going to be as good as if you made it yourself. So um, it's about $30 to purchase a costume, and this cost me $30 as well. And it looks more authentic in my opinion. This really turned out cool. I love it. So easy to do. So it's a lot of different things, but it's easy. You know, it's not hard stuff. So I hope you try it. If not, send it to a friend that might want to try it. If you've got any friends that are looking for a costume, I'm sure they would appreciate a little help. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Happy Halloween!